Hello everyone, this is White Wolf. We're gonna start off this live. And I wanted to talk about today, just letting Source use you as a vessel of power, knowing that you're just facilitating the power for Source and you're just relaying the message. You're just the messenger as Source uses you as a tool so people can be healed, to learn, to relay, but also you learn and heal and relay as that act of service. When you are of service in any way that you can, you're just letting Source use you as that divine essence, as that divine power, and then it will guide you in using your gifts in so many different ways that you've never even seen before within yourself. So it allows you not only to explore yourself and to explore your depth and to explore how Source uses you as a beacon of love, as a beacon of light, but also using your gift as the gift that keeps on giving. And when you allow yourself to be the gift, you allow yourself to receive the gift, but also you allow others to receive that gift as well. And then there's this overwhelming clarity that comes over you whenever you're using your gift as a way of love. And when you're giving that love and there's no condition with that love and there's no distortion with the love and there's no illusions that are being presented to it, but it's just pure and it's vibrant and it's just alive and present right there in that moment is really impactful. It's impactful because it lets you know what you're doing in that moment is very true and it's very honest and it's coming from a sense of alignment instead of a sense of distortion a sense of negativity, a sense of that there is something just energetically off there. The energy is not off because you're always on. You're always on autopilot, but you're not being controlled by a substance, by human thought forms, by perceptions, by other things that present themselves to you as a source of negativity. But you're being a beacon and a vehicle and allowing yourself to allow source to use you as the vessel to relay the power, to relay the truth, to deliver it, but also be distinct and be aware of how you relay the message and that whatever comes from your own beingness is a sense of truth, is a sense of love, is a sense of unity, and you allow people to understand it in a very grounded form so that everybody isn't confused. So there is no confusion, there is no distortion. There is nothing within the space of creation that allows it to be of that essence, but you allow yourself to be of that essence. You allow yourself to carry the torch for the future. And what's beautiful about this is that we don't have to be perfect. We don't have to be perfect at what we do. We don't have to try to force it. We don't have to try to manifest it. We don't have to try to because Source will ultimately do it when it's in divine timing. When it's in divine timing and when it's in alignment, when it's in direct correlation of what you want to bring forth within this reality, you will always go for what is more aligned. You will always go for what is more in resonance, more in truth, more in syncopation and repetition. And you will be guided by those reflections. You'll be guided by the confirmations. You'll be guided by so many different depictions and illusions that are being relayed to you. And you allow yourself to be the thing that manifests it. But it's, you're given the power, you're given the grace, you're given the tools to be able to demonstrate what needs to be received. And when you are allowing everybody else to receive, you feel 10 times better about yourself, about your life, about everything that is holy, you feel so much better about your own space. Because you, are allowing everybody to receive. Everyone is energetically being receptive in this moment because everybody has a receptor. Everybody is in sync in some way, shape or form, even if they're not tapped into meditation because everybody has a transmutation of the soul and everybody is being reflected so many different things, but everybody can be tapped in all at once. That's simultaneity. And when we have that within our space, then it doesn't matter who is relaying the message, who is giving the wisdom, who is giving the love, and who is imparting that love 
to everybody else, we are what guides it. We are what gives it. We are what allows it to happen. And when you allow the beauty and the matrimony and the service and you being used as the vessel, as the vessel of truth, as the vessel of love, you allow everybody to really transform and activate something within themselves that they didn't know that they had. And sometimes it's just a simple sentence. Sometimes it's just you showing compassion. Sometimes it's just you showing love to another person that allows them to really know who they are in this moment. So when you allow everybody to know themselves in this moment, to know themselves as love, to know themselves as unity, to know themselves as the passion and the glory and the energy of God's source energy to relay the message in such a way that's so emphatic and impactful, you allow that other person to have their day made for them. You made someone's day. You were the reason why someone really gave their life to God. And it's not even meditation. It's not even being a psychic. But in that moment, they experienced God and how they needed to experience it. And if you were able to relay that message and they were able to receive God in all ways and all ways to no end, and they received it in their own truth and resonance, it goes beyond spirituality and psychic abilities and different capabilities that we have within ourselves. So sometimes it's the ability to just relay the message and to be the truth of the essence and be the truth of the message that somebody receives on a cellular level that doesn't even have a connection to you, that doesn't even have a connection with meditation, that doesn't even have a connection with God, even though they do have a connection with God, but maybe they didn't know that in that moment and you were just a simple reminder and validation for them so that Source could use you as the vessel. That's what's beautiful about spirituality, is that everybody can receive in their own way and experience God in every single capacity, in every single vantage point from their own perspective. And that's what's beautiful about it because source is not a thing, source is not a concept, source is not indoctrination, that there is no rules or boundaries or regulations on how you can experience it yourself inside of your own heart everybody can experience it even if they're not tapped into meditation i've had so many of my clients that have never meditated before and i was able to get them in a meditative state because god was using me as the vessel and i was just the facilitator of that energy and i was just relaying the message as the messenger and just being able to allow them to receive at the capacity that they're supposed to receive that's amazing. That means that we have the power swirling through us, that we have the ability to move mountains and turn those mountains into mohills, but also just bridge the gap of science, of religion, of inventing stuff. No matter what it is, it could be entrepreneurship. Spirituality is all of those things. And we're able to connect with everybody and allow everybody to receive in their own way. Some people will be imparted wisdom to you, but also you impart wisdom to them. And they become something else that has nothing to do with spirituality. See, that's, that's the, they could become an actor, they could become a writer, they become an entrepreneur. But it's because you took the time out of your day. And sometimes you'll be forced to do these acts of service, you know, you won't have a choice. Sometimes you'll be forced to do these acts of service because it's something in a past lifetime. It could be something that you're supposed to do, that you're supposed to you know, follow through on. But when you do that and you follow through on source and you hear the guidance and you hear the voice and you just listen to the signs and confirmations and you follow those breadcrumb trails, it will never fail you because source always guides you to where you need to be, to where you need to meet with that energy, but also allowing yourself to get the most out of your spiritual journey and really using your gift as a way of breaching the gap within people's lives and to really show them that it's very possible to change your emotions, to change your thoughts, to change how you view yourself, but also to follow your passions regardless if it's spirituality or not. Because spirituality 
can be such a gateway and enlightenment is such a gateway into many different configurations of God in the God codes and the source codes. So it doesn't matter if you're an inventor, an entrepreneur, a scientist, uh, someone who's anointed in Christianity, everybody has their place. It's just finding your placement within this big puzzle piece of consciousness and enlightenment. And that's what's beautiful about spirituality, and it's been my saving grace, because it's made me better at doing things. It's made me better at understanding things, but it's made me better at being more fulfilled, being more happy, being more driven, being and that we can really allow... I have to open the door. Sorry about that. Nature just uh, runs amok, and also it messes with the connection when the door is closed on this live, so nature runs amok. But Mother Nature has to run amok because we have to be accountable on what we're doing to Mother Nature, right? And also grounding and also just clearing and also just helping in any capacity that you can. Your life's journey is your life's journey and nobody's going to take that away from you. It's yours to use it to the best of your capabilities. And if you're guided by that and you have the strength within that and the inspiration inside of you, it will always bring you to where you need to be. Because nobody else has an indication over your journey. It doesn't matter about your past traumas, your past lifetimes. It doesn't matter about past abuse. Now it does matter to clear that and to let go of it, but it doesn't have an indication and it doesn't control or dictate your life anymore. So it's the ability to let it go, forget it, and don't give it the time of day. Because if you keep talking about it, if you keep going into these same patterns and stories and all these other things, then it's not going to bring you the blessing. And that's kind of the way that we have a healthy source of reflection and validation and accountability because we're always kind of purifying the energy. Because we're like, okay, I'm not going to talk about the same story about me being bullied because that's not helping me grow and expand and teach myself new ways, right? So using yourself as a vessel is just always wanting your self-development, always wanting the best out of your spiritual journey and empowering yourself and your thoughts, your emotions, but also stepping out in faith. One of the most difficult things is to really step out in faith because you have to let go of your ego and vanity and all the things that you distrust. And you can't have a disdain or disrespect towards it. You have to trust and have faith in the unity and the purification of God's source energy and the great I am. You have to have that because if you don't have it, it's not going to work out because you got to have this undeniable, unshakable, unwavering conviction within yourself because then that's you being used as the vessel, as the purified vessel, as the energy, as carrying the energy for the future, but also being able to carry the weight and sometimes it's not really a weight of a burden, but it's just the weight that you carry because you're one of the chosen, one of the anointed, one of the ones that is supposed to stand out among the rest. You know, we all have a high call in our life, rather we look at it in a specific way. We have to look at it in a specific way. We all have a high calling. We all have something calling us to something. And that's why I always do these lives. Um, I haven't been doing them because I've been kind of sick lately. Um, <laughs> I need to get back in my groove. So I'm trying to get back in my groove and start doing these again. And um, to really understand, just find your groove, find your pattern, find what keeps you motivated. If you do that, and it's just simple things like my girlfriend, even though I was super, super hungry, I only had a protein shake and I cooked or something, I put off my hunger and all that, even though I was working out in the yard and doing stuff like that, I put my own hunger off and cooked or something. That's an act of service. You know, that's just you being the vessel. That's you kind of like thinking to yourself, oh, she wants something to eat, she's hungry, I'm gonna make her something. It's just taking the focus off of yourself. And I'm not saying don't do things for yourself. 
because then that's not a balance. Always do stuff for yourself and have the fine balance of service because it's always good to treat yourself but also have that fine balance of service. That's giving you balance. So don't be afraid to reward yourself and don't be afraid to put things aside to be of service. That's balance. And respecting your worth too as the vessel because source wants you to respect your worth, respect your vessel, respect everything inside and your alignment at the end of the day because that's gonna be the thing that guides you and teaches you and helps you grow and expand and change. And I think it's just patience. I think we all need to be patient sometimes. I'm an impatient person. I'll tell you that right now. I think where my impatience <laughs> stems from is me just wanting it to get it done and do it and stuff like that. But then that can work against you. So it's kind of finding like what's healthy impatience? What's healthy perfectionism? You know, what's healthy ways of discernment and kind of respecting your alignment? Because throughout the day, you have to do that or you're going to go nuts. <laughs> if you don't find that balance, it's going to drive you nuts. But you have to have, find that balance where everything is healthy within your space beyond just physicality and exercising and eating right and things of that nature. But sometimes a healthy mind and a healthy soul could be the very thing that pushes you through the day. It's kind of like I was doing workout in the yard and that is a meditative state. It was relaxing. It was fun. It was kind of just doing my daily routine with chores and things of that nature. But looking at your life, and it could be very simple, but it could be very complex at the same time within the simplicity, but that's just allowing Source to use you as the vessel. And if Source uses you as the vessel, you will always be of service to everything. It's kind of like looking at the weeds in your yard and just spraying those weeds. It's sometimes just like not going to that uh, restaurant that you don't really like to go to because your friends like to go there, but you don't like the energy there. It's kind of like if you don't have friends that benefit you, then get yourself some new friends that are gonna be high elevation and help you out and things of that nature. It's kind of just like pulling the weeds in your life so that source can use you as a vessel, but also just standing up and just following the calling that is present. If you follow the calling on your life, if you follow the anointing on your life, it will guide you to so many places that it will surprise you. If you have faith, if you see something that you know is going to manifest, know it's going to manifest. It's just the act of knowing because it allows you that you don't have to know everything and figure everything out because that's dictatorship. Then you don't have to know every single thing. But just in the firm knowing that I am blessed, that I am everything, that I am love, that I am a genuine vessel of source and I allow source to use me today as a genuine source of love and energy. And that's, that's it. That's all you have to do. So I see that there's three people. Uh, we're going to do some healing energy. So if you would like to receive this healing energy, also guys, I'm going to be going live tonight doing reading ceilings activations for 20 to $25, something like that. And I'm also gonna add something into those readings. I'm gonna do readings where I do rain stick healings as well. So if you want a rain stick healing, I'm gonna have, I have a rain stick in here somewhere, and I'll use that as well. But we're gonna do some healing energies, also private sessions. You can book, it's 170 for one hour and 270 for two hours. So we're gonna do some healing energy to have an aura cleansing to help us have vitality, to help us have good health, to help us just be a vibrant, alive, aware individual so we can allow ourselves to really make an impactful change to allow Source to use us as the vessel of service.
Archangels of Love and Light, who's willing to cleanse us of our auric field, tapping into God's source energy in the great I Am, diving deep into Middle Mother Gaia Earth. And so it is. Allow us to tap into the energy of water. And let's just act as if we are dipping ourselves in the water to have cleansing. Just taking a little bit of a dunk into the water and just taking off all of the energy of the day. Just kind of flicking it off, rinse and repeat and just allow ourselves to embrace the new day. And also, we're going to receive a heart activation here and now. Receive this heart activation. We have an emerald, an amethyst, and a white gold. It's in a shape of a Celtic heart as well, so renewed hearts. And we're also going to do the kundalini energy, which is going to help us with quick release and then rejuvenation. A lot of emotional healing is coming in very rapidly. So if you feel intense emotions, releasing shame, releasing despair, releasing old patterns, all thought forms, and allowing ourselves to receive frequencies, activations, and codes that are coming from the 10th dimension as well. And then also the energy of protection, that violet flame, the beautiful violet flame, which allows us to have psychic protection. So that's what we're going to implement as well as psychic protection. And some of you need to connect with your guides as well. So I'm going to help you connect with the Osage Indians. Connect with Archangel Michael. Connect with Archangel Gabriel. He is the angel of purification. And also the Source Dragon is coming in very strongly to help us with the activations of God. To help us tap into the God Code. And to help us receive the vibrations of Source. And in this moment, allow Source to use you as a vessel of holiness, of love, of unity, and a vessel of teaching. I'm seeing some monarch butterflies for some of you. So that's a symbol of transformation, a symbol of spreading your wings and flying, but also stepping out in faith, but also just a symbol of royalty as well.
And lastly, we're just going to ground deep into Middle Mother Gaia Earth to recalibrate the energies that you're receiving. Just to make sense of this whole exchange. And just feel balanced, feel recalibrated, and just feel like your aura is basically like cleansed. And so it is. So if you guys feel any different, uh, like, like aura cleansing, prosperity, vitality, health, and things of that nature, I hope that was very beneficial for all of you. Thank you guys so much for being a part of this live. And thank you for listening to the entire message. I think it was one person who was almost here the entire time, but I want to appreciate all of you just coming on the live, taking time out of your day to, you know, receive and to listen. It really means a lot. And also, guys, don't forget, I'm going to get back on my schedule because I've been kind of sick lately. Um, Wednesday, Thursday, and Fridays, I'll be going live doing reading ceilings activations where there will be 20 to $25 donations. Uh, where you guys can receive activations, rain stick healings, also love readings, anything that your heart desires, just let me know. So around 10 or 11 p.m. Eastern, I'll be going live doing that. And also I have private sessions if you want to book. It's one hour for 170 and two hours for 270. But at the end of the day, just allow yourselves to really allow Source to use you as a vessel, to use you as an act of service, and to use you as a place of goodness, as a gift that keeps on giving, but also as a place of peace. Just be a temple of source. And if you allow yourself to receive the riches of life, the truth of life, the ecstasy of life, you will receive the embodiment and you will walk around as the temple of God's source energy and you'll be the immovable force, the electromagnetic kinetic source energy that penetrates all of illusion. So I'm just gonna leave you uh, with that. But thank you guys so much. Uh, God bless. Namaste. And until next time, this is White Wolf. Thank you guys so much.